What's up, everybody? I'm Chase Lee reporting for DallasMovieScreens.com, and I got another movie to review for you guys. That would be The Death of Stalin. Now, this one is about Stalin and his last few remaining days and basically seeing the chaos of his regime trying to take control of his death afterwards that's the primary focus of the film now before i saw any trailer or even heard about it uh, i had no idea what this movie was about uh, when i heard like you know just kind of whispers in the, the through the grapevine like the death of stalin the death of stalin i'd be like whoa what is that um but when i saw the trailer I, I thought it was hilarious it's you know directed uh, by and some of the writers are uh, uh from the show veep and they wrote a lot of episodes uh, on that show. I have only seen one episode of Veep, and I realize it is a very popular show. Uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus uh, has won several uh, Emmys, Golden Globes, whatever she's won. She's won a lot for that show. So I realize that show is very popular amongst the public. I've only seen one episode, and that one episode I saw, I liked a lot. Just, you know, I, I fell behind um, watching other stuff, but I got that their style of humor um while watching it and it's very dry it's very british like uh mockumentary you know television and this one doesn't have the mockumentary feel but it's definitely dry and i'm here to report to you that the death of stalin is quite good i don't love it uh but on first impression first viewing i liked it a lot i need to watch it again uh, just to make sure i love it but for right now i liked it so uh, let's uh, get real and break this down. Let's we'll start with some of the negatives. Uh, these negatives are very minor, but uh, first off, some of the humor does not work. A little too dry for my taste. It's like putting, you know, uh, your hand on sandpaper and just kind of rolling down. You're like, man, that feels feels a little too dry. And so that's that's the way it was for some of the humor. It just I realized the joke was present. It was delivered. The comedic timing was there. I I recognize this, but I just did not laugh. And I was like, man, that was just a little too dry for me <laughs> so uh but i think like 85 90 percent of the jokes do work and some of them have me uh laughing in tears just the way it was edited and cut together and the way they delivered the joke it works uh well with its humor for the most part giving it serious dra uh, backdrop but i'd say like 10 15 percent of the jokes do not work second thing it feels a bit overstuffed with characters there's a lot of characters uh in this film a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of character names that i just frankly don't remember they have a lot of title cards below each face and i still don't remember names and i remember characters faces and their actions that they did in this film but i don't really remember their names and that might have had to, to do with just too many characters working in and around this story it was funny to witness some of these characters do their things but like I said, to be honest with you, I don't remember their names, so I guess they weren't really that memorable. I, I have no clue. Maybe I'm just dumb. And the last thing is that the ending of the film felt a little too abruptly serious for the tone it had throughout. I, I don't know. It was kind of weird. Like, the last, like, five to ten minutes, it just it took this, like, dark turn, like, you know, an actual, like, you know, uh, period drama, period war drama, and it just, I don't know, it just didn't really fit uh, on the way. It was very somber, very depressing. I was like, Wait a minute, this movie just like, I had this, I don't know, maybe that's how Veep is, I have no clue, so maybe I'm just dumb, but that's just the way uh, I felt, a little, a little too um, tonally abrupted at the very end. So that's it the, for the negatives though, the positives, whew, this movie's funny, it's hilarious, you would never think a movie like this where you have like Stalin, one of the most notorious leaders in human history, and you twist it and make it a comedy. It works. It works so well when you have cast members like Jason Isaacs or um, you know Jeffrey Tambor or Steve Buscemi. They are so into their characters and their comedic timing is so fresh and so sharp that I felt like I was watching these buffoons, uh, you know, try to handle the regime after Stalin died. I didn't see actors. I felt like they were real people, and that's what kind of humanized it a little bit because. You know, Stalin was a human. He had humans around him, and people make mistakes and you know fumble around like idiots. And I, I don't know. I I, I kind of like that l little little touch to touch of humanity to it. But the humor works. Uh, all the actors are just so well casted in their roles. All of them give 110 percent, even with some of the physical stuff. It's pretty great uh, to witness uh, when the humor does hit. You will you will laugh in tears. I I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. The second thing I really liked about it is the actual pace of the film. It would British humor or any type of dry humor, it can seem super slow. It can seem like it's just, 
Okay, let, let's let's get on with this, folks, and let's get to the end. No, it actually had a pretty pretty nice rhythm to it. I was I was getting into it, you know, laugh, laugh, laugh. Maybe that joke didn't work. Okay, some nice set pieces, and you know, maybe the joke uh, works. Like there was a lot of stuff to keep your attention to where I think. Watching it from beginning to end, I think you'll just find like little nuggets, little you know Easter eggs of jokes or you know something you didn't see before. And this is kind of one of those movies you could watch and repeat, especially if you are a fan of you know period war dramas and stuff, uh, or anything about you know uh, you know terrible leaders in human history. I think this is definitely one that uh, people might enjoy just for like comedic Easter eggs. And the last thing I really enjoyed is the actual set design and the production design and the costumes. It is legit. It looks like, uh, you know, just speaking about a movie that, you know, just came out last year, like The Darkest Hour, on how those sets look, you know, just, uh, uh, just like super detailed and like, you know, they look like they're from that time era and like they're so colorful and vibrant and just, it looks like they took weeks upon weeks of hard work to build these sets and costumes. This is the same exact way. So when you have a story and dialogue and characters that are inherently funny in this movie and you have it amongst like you know elegant set design and you know art direction throughout it's just it's kind of a great contrast because it almost plays out like a slapstick comedy but with great great production design almost reminded me of um like, like a buster keaton or like you know uh the marx brothers or something um so I, I don't know. I, I think it. I think it worked on uh, that level. So even if you didn't find the humor interesting, which I hope you do, um, there's definitely uh, you know good eye candy that you can kind of see throughout and be like, oh wow, that that was really cool how they designed that. Overall, really like this movie. I would recommend it to cut through the fray of uh, movies this weekend if you want to watch something different. I'm going to give The Death of Stalin a B plus. So what about you guys? Uh, have you even heard of it? Well, what's going on? Comment in that place below my face and let me know. And as always, guys, I'm Chase Lee reporting for DallasMovieScreenings.com. And tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.